Where do you think you're going? You're off to look for Kai, aren't you? Well, I'm coming with you. Oh, hello, Veronica. What are you doing out here? Oh, those stupid fishermen said the party was only for grown-ups, so they couldn't let me in. Is every bar in the world full of stubborn idiots or something? Anyway, you're going to look for Kai, aren't you? I've got nothing better to do, so I might as well join you. Sorry, but I'm not the man from your story. You must have me mixed up with somebody else. Hmm. Don't give us that nonsense. We know you're the only Kai in Lonolulu. If you never meant to marry that poor mermaid, you should never have proposed to her. Hey, go easy on the accusations, will you? People here got no love for mermaids. If they think I do, I'll be in trouble. The Kai you're looking for is my grandfather, Kai Noah. I take it you've heard the tale of the mermaid's curse? Yes, yes, your mother told us all about it. But I can't see what an old fairy tale has to do with anything. You can't keep Michelle waiting any longer. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It's not a fairy tale, it's true. The fishermen from the story that was my tutu, my grandpa. Huh? It all happened 50 years ago, and it happened just like my ma tells it. But the story didn't end there. Ten years after grandpa got chased out of the village, the kahuna's daughter, Leilani, she married another man, and they had a kid together. After the baby came, the people started to forget about Kainoa and the curse the mermaid put on him. 
until one day, another great storm struck, even more violent than the one that sent my grandfather to the bottom of the sea. The Kahuna's boat went down, and him and his daughter's new husband went with it. The men who survived went to break the news to Leilani, but when they got there, her and the baby, they were nowhere to be found. The villagers said it was the mermaid's revenge, that she took all four of them because she couldn't have Kainoa. So they lit torches and they marched to Saikiki Beach to confront him. When they threw open the door of his hut, they couldn't believe what they saw. He'd been living all alone for the last 10 years, but there he was with a baby in his arms. And the baby, it was dripping with water. They ran off screaming, talking about how he must have had a kid with the mermaid. And that was the last time anyone from the village went to Saikiki. Wait, but that baby must have been your mother, which would mean she was half mermaid, which would make you... Cooly Cooly, don't even say it. My mother is a human being. My grandpa found her abandoned on the beach and raised her as his own. He never had a kid with a mermaid. That's just a stupid rumor made up by a bunch of superstitious fishermen. If that mermaid really is still out there somewhere waiting for grandpa, there's something I want you to give her. Meet me on Saikiki Beach. It's on the other side of the cape. You can get there through the chapel at the back of the village. I'll leave the door unlocked. This veil was my tutus, Ma said when she found him after he died. He was just lying there holding on to it. Guess there was a reason I never threw it away. If you really know where to find that mermaid, I want you to take it to her and tell her he's dead. Look. I'm sorry if I was kind of short with you back there, but it hasn't been easy for me and my ma. After Grandpa died, they let her go back to the village and marry a local guy, but it didn't stop folks talking. But she rose above it, turned it into that story show of hers, and now that's how she makes her living. She's a smart woman, tough too. I hate that mermaid for what she's put us through and I don't want my kids to suffer like we have. The kahuna is finally letting me sail with the other men. The curse is nearly undone. Please, take the veil and let that be an end to it.
Why have you brought me here? That voice! It's music to my ears! I feel like I could cry. Oh, darling, tell me, is it you? My one and only Kai? Yeah, I'm Kai. Do I know you? Joy, you don't know me. I don't know you. You're not my darling boy. No, I'm not. The man you loved, he was my grandfather. But he's not here anymore. <sighs> my darling Kai. My one true love, the one that I adored. You died alone and friendless on this cold and windswept shore. Oh, how could I forget we mermaids live 500 years? Quick as a flash, a human life just ups and disappears. Without Kai, hours seem to pass too slowly to be true. But now I see cruel time was flowing faster than I knew. <sighs> Thanks for finding Kai for me. You've been a proper friend. To trace my love across the sea until the bitter end. I said I would reward you and I mean to pay that debt. You'll find your prize upon the self-same island where we met. I'm sorry I can't come along and see you on your way. But now I'm here, I can't go back. I think I have to stay. You've got your granddad's hands, you know. 
so soft yet strong and honest. The hands of one who'd never, ever make a faithless promise. A mermaid who sets foot on land will perish in the brine. But that's all right. I got to meet my darling one last time. been a human, or if he had been like me, perhaps we could have lived together, happy as can be. But I'm a mermaid. He's a man. There's no point asking why. He was my one true love. But now, it's time to say... Grandpa's cabin. A letter. This is Grandpa's handwriting. Dearest beloved, ever since you saved me on the day of the great storm, the dream of one day being reunited with you is all I have lived for. But now I fear that dream is over. Forgive me, my darling, but I cannot keep my promise. Some years after my boat was burned and I was exiled to this beach, the fishing fleet was hit by another great storm, and many people lost their lives. The Kahuna and his daughter Leilani's husband were among them. One night, not long afterward, I saw a woman standing on the cliffs. She had a baby in her arms. It was Leilani, the woman who was once to be my wife. With her father and husband gone, she had lost all hope and all reason. I called out to her, but in her grief, she could not hear me. Before my disbelieving eyes, she threw herself into the ocean. I tried to save them. I did everything I could, but only the baby survived. to row back home? You're not in any pain? I wish you'd let me keep you till you're fighting fit again. Don't worry about me, Michelle. You fixed me up real good. I'm fitter than ever. Uh, ah! <laughs> to go. There's things you have to do. Just promise me you'll be back soon. I'll wait right here for you. I'm 
sorry, Michelle. I... I can't leave. I can't just be thinking of myself anymore. This child needs me. The villagers say you put a curse on me, but it's only because they don't understand. They don't want what happened to me to happen to anybody else. You have to forgive them. They don't know you like I do. They don't know you at all. And what they don't know, they fear. I sometimes wonder if you're still sitting there, on that rock, still waiting for me to return. But it's too late for me now. I'll never make it back there. I'll understand if you can never forgive me. But I want you to know one thing. I love you. I always will. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have been so hard on you. Without you, I'd never have known all of this. Never met Michelle. All this time, I hated that mermaid for what she did to my grandfather. But now I see how he really felt. He wasn't cursed. He really loved her. How's it going?
Trevins. This place is a veritable paradise under the sea. Just when you think you've seen it all, you find yourself in Mermaid Town. So we can breathe underwater now? That harp is something else. Well, now we're here, I guess we can find out if that story about the giant pearl is just an old wives' tale or not. Finding the orb is important, but we need to talk to the Queen first. We have to tell her about Michelle. Welcome you to Nautica, the land beneath the waves. What brings you, Prince of Dandrasil, down to these coral caves? Huh? How do you know he's the Prince of Dandrasil? <laughs> I have a second sight that touches every quarter, by which I keep abreast of all the news above the water. Of doomed love between men and mermaids, let us later speak. First, allow me to present the item that you seek. Behold the shining sphere of green, the orb you humans need. The treasures of the world above are marvelous indeed. Consider this my thanks for what you did for dear Michelle. Pray take it kindly, travelers, and may it serve you well. Such romances are blighted, and love between man and sea maiden fizzles unrequited. For years now I have sought a way to remedy this curse. Alas, my every effort ends in failure or worse. You humans cannot help but seem a fragile kind to we who live 500 years and more down here beneath the sea. But though the flame of human life burns short, it burns so bright. You never cease to struggle. No, you push, you strive, you fight. 
And so your kind admire our kind, but we admire in turn. It is the world tree's will that from each other we should learn. It was the world tree's will that brought Michelle and Kai together. I pray that in their next lives they may stay that way forever. So too was it the world tree's will that brought you here today. But now, dear Luminary, you must be upon your way. So set sail on the tide of time that flows ceaselessly on. And if Yggdrasil wills it, we shall meet again anon. <sighs> Remember, though the paths we walk are filled with twists and turns, all roads lead from the Tree of Life, and to the Tree return. <laughs>